Today we're going to perform some mid-journey prompt experiments. We're going to find out if certain power words for quality actually make a difference. Also, what about the order of the words? Adding commas, dashes, things like that, trying other languages and just seeing, does any of this stuff actually make a difference? Well, let's jump in and we're going to find out for sure. The first thing I'm going to do is set a seed. I type in prefer suffix and paste in a value a seed with the following number. So if I hit that, now if I type in my prompt and hit enter, and this is the image we get. If I type that exact same prompt in again, and again, we have the same image. If I scroll up, you can see it's basically identical because we've used the same prompt. There are actually minor differences though. If you look at the eyes on this dog here, compared to the eyes on this dog, the, sh the picture is slightly different. It's not actually identical. So using the same seed for one produces an extremely similar result, but it doesn't produce an identical result. So that's important to note. However, it's still important for this experiment that we use the seed to see what the difference is. So this time if I go and type in the exact same prompt, but add an exclamation mark, you can see we now get a different image. Although it's not vastly different in what we've received at the end, a few things have been moved around, but it does actually change the prompt, just not by much. So I've tried a few more things. However, I did change looking at a bird to staring at a bird, but I did notice something very interesting. When you put a dog looking at a bird and compare it to a dog staring at a bird, they're actually incredibly similar, except for a minor difference at the top while the bottom is the same. Either way, what you see is the exact prompt I've used and we're gonna compare a few things, such as adding a comma. So I've added a comma to this prompt and you can see the image is actually different. It does affect the image, uh, so commas do actually make a difference. Moving on, I actually converted it to capitals and again, it has made a difference as well. And in both instances, it's changed the style primarily to more of a uh, painted style. And moving on, I added a dash to hungry dash dog and it didn't really change it much at all. So the dash, it's, I don't know if it's been ignored or not, but it is a different image. And I changed the word order around a little bit and you'll see that it does actually, it's got a dog hungry instead of a hungry dog. And you know, it's still pretty much the same. It's changed the image again, but just altered what we get uh, in a very minimal way. And changed it to staring at a bird, a hungry dog. Once again, similar results. One thing I will say about this though, is while the image is always different, it doesn't impact the image a great deal. So it can be good for trying to just get a slightly different result. But overall, I don't think it makes a huge difference and it's probably more a mental thing to break up words or get it in the way you understand it than giving it to mid journey. But I do think commas would be important for separating different sort of concepts. Moving on to power words. I'm gonna look at power words that enhance quality in particular. And I do have some interesting insights about this. Here we have 4K and a hungry dog staring at a bird 4K. Now, the quality is not really any much better. The image is different. However, one thing I will point out is it's lent more towards photography on the right. You can see on the first image, top left, and the bottom right of the next image is actually a similar image but mirrored. So it is a very similar translation of the prompt, but leaning more towards uh, photography because maybe what Mid Journey's been trying on 4K and 8K is probably just the simple fact that that's mostly photography type images. So it's veered away from art. Uh, the same thing again, if I go to HD, we get more photography based images. So I think what these terms tend to do is sort of pigeonhole things more into the realm of photography or into a certain sort of area where Mid Journey's been trained using that word. And again, I'll go to high quality, same result. Even HDR, again, a photography term, doesn't actually improve the quality a ton but it does tend to make things look more like photography. And then when you move on to highly detailed, it goes in the other direction. It's almost like it creates highly detailed artwork. So some of these phrases tend to be more sort of focused at the medium or the art form that that word is used mostly for. Masterpiece, however, does have a different sort of effect where it creates a certain type of look as opposed to increasing the detail. But uh, we're starting to get a little bit away from quality words here, but you can see Using words to enhance the quality of your image, I don't think it really enhances the word, the quality, so to speak. It tends to steer the prompt in a direction that that word would be most likely used for. I read the other day that Mid Journey is not trained on other languages. So I thought I would test that out for myself and it was just a comment, so let's see what we get. I entered the text of our prompt in here, a hungry dog staring at a bird. And I change from English to Japanese and I get this here. And let's check out the results. 
Now, translating the two Japanese, we do get a very interesting result. However, there are still birds and a dog in there, but it's just not combined in the one image. So it has understood pieces of that prompt. And moving on to Italian, we still get a dog and a bird, so it seems to have a bit of an idea of what those words mean. However, I don't think it's able to read it quite as precisely. When you move to Chinese, it is uh, Chinese simplified. The images are very different. And we do have some birds in the top right corner, but otherwise it's not really uh, sort of understanding that prompt. And when we move to German, it does seem to have a better idea of what German is. It has a dog and a bird, but the dog is not necessarily staring at the bird as much. So I do think it doesn't understand the languages. However, some of the words must seem to link up. Now I tried a different prompt with Japanese again, and I do think it understands a lot of the characters for Japanese because a warrior ready for battle, it has lent towards the samurai side of things. So that is an interesting sort of conclusion, I think overall for using different languages. So to a degree, you can try them to get some unique results, but I don't think it's going to always understand the prompt fully. Next, we're going to try shorten. I have this prompt. It's quite long, but I'm going to enter it and just see what kind of result Midjourney gives us off the bat. Now, that's a pretty cool looking image. But if we type in shorten in our prompt, we get these shorter prompts and I'm going to try all of them to see how they turn out. So we have our original image here. You got a pretty good look at it and I'm going to move it off to the side and we're going to scroll down and check out and see if Shorten is able to really focus on what's important in our prompt and get an accurate result. Our first one here actually looks quite similar. We've still got the armor to warrior. We've got the sunset. It's pretty close to it. And once again, even shorter, we've removed a lot more in this one and the results are still actually quite similar. Now moving down again to an even shorter prompt and we still get that same result although things are starting to look a little bit different but overall the result is similar again and warrior sunset armored cinematic this shows just how much is wasted in prompts when you consider that this has turned out really quite similar but when we move down to sunset armored we start to get a bit of a cyborg look so it is shorten is actually a really powerful command and seems to do a pretty good job at shortening prompts but let's try something else. Let's go to imagine. We have a dog staring at a bird, vibrant color, cinematic movie still. And this time I'm gonna use version 5.2 to see how well Mood Journey can use describe to understand its own images. Enter. And now we're gonna grab this first image and we're gonna save it. Now we're gonna type in slash describe, add an image. Here you can see we have our dog image, the exact same image here. Hit enter. And now we have these four prompts and then naturally they're different than the one I input because the scribe does tend to go into a bit more detail. Let's imagine them all and see how close to the mark the describe function actually is for version 5.2. So again, this is our original image. I'm going to move it off to the side. I'm going to scroll down and see what we've got. So these images, they've got the right subject matter and I think it's actually understood it pretty well. It has that gold tint to it, but it is slightly different. This is one way I think of also kind of taking an existing prompt, refeeding it into the system and seeing how Midjourney can take it and make it just a bit different. Move down again. And once again, this one is actually quite similar, but has two dogs. So we get the, uh, the a little bit of variance while still sticking to the overall concept. Moving down again, another longer prompt, very similar style. It hasn't isolated the dog's head as much, but um, this one is probably the best out of all of them so far, but it's still, looking about the same. This one is probably the most different, but it is a cool way. It's actually, this one has isolated the dog a little bit more and it's added a lot of sort of really cool ideas to it. It's taken the direction we were going in and kind of expanded some things uh, a little bit more than expected. So that is a, another cool thing you can try is actually creating an image, downloading it, feeding it back into describe and seeing what results it'll give you. Very powerful tool, very cool. But those are the experiments for today. And I wonder if you've got anything you want me to experiment with, any ideas, and maybe we can do this again. Please leave a comment below with any ideas you might have. Otherwise, I hope you found that interesting. And if you did, please consider giving the video a like. Anything you were surprised by, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.